we perceive water, especially the water of the sea, as alive. This liveliness is captured in the Greek word marmarigma. The root is marmar. That root is in the Greek word for marble, marmaron. The 6th century Justinianic interior of Hagia Sophia doesn't have human figures in the monumental mosaic. The space is covered with geometric and vegetal motifs. So this interior communicates the metaphysical through other means. The visual phenomena are connected to the aesthetic of marble and water. This marmarigma or glitter that is present in the surface of the mosaic, as well as the reflection of light from the polished marble, increases the radiance of the space. Acoustically, the sound waves are reflected from these marble surfaces, so the interior becomes activated by the energy of light and the energy of sound. The chant that unfolds in this space has a reverberant return that the space immediately imprints on it. Therefore, human speech becomes stretched, extenuated. As a result, the divine, the metaphysical, becomes present in the space as a bodiless voice. Hagia Sophia today is a museum and there is a ban for any performance of the human voice or instrumental music. Digital technology becomes our only means to experience this fantastic building as an instrument of the human voice. If you make a sound in an enclosed space, you're going to hear that sound and you're going to hear all the reflections and reverberation that the space gives you. The space doesn't care what sound you make. It's going to process it in the same way. You get the same reflections, you get the same reverberation. So what we did to understand the acoustics of Hagia Sophia is we went there and we popped a balloon. That tells you how to imprint on any sound you desire the acoustics of Hagia Sophia. The enhancement, it's done so well that we make the normal kind of adjustments we do in different buildings. At first I thought, oh, well, we'll sing and they'll make us sound different. But the reality is we interact with it and we sing differently. We change how fast or slow we sing, how loud or soft we sing. It's as if we are singing in the church. It's an ancient meets future experience. Even though a lot of these texts are still sung in various Eastern Orthodox traditions today, to hear them with their original music in their original sequence, that gives you some kind of window into what the experience of worship would have been like for the people at that time. <laughs> 